Hi everyone, I'm Robert. I'm Jake. And I'm Ari. And we're here at the Living Planet Aquarium enjoying the holiday season. You know, I love the holidays because it's all about spending time with the people you care about. Like you two. Aww. Speaking of the holidays, I got you guys a surprise. Oh, Aw, thanks Ari. You're welcome. I got you guys something too. What? Thanks oh. Jake. No problem. Uh, no, this gets me thinking. Why do people have friends in the first place? People? We work at the aquarium. What about the animals? Yeah, do animals have friends? Well, remember that one episode where we asked guests what all living things need to survive? Yeah, what about it? Well, there was this adorable little girl and she... You know what? Let's just watch it. What do all living things need to survive? Food. Food? What else? Water. Water? What else do you think they might need? Friends, friends are super great to have, right? You know, she's totally right. Animals do need those things. Especially friends. Yeah, and did you know that for us humans, having friends not only leads to emotional benefits, but even physical benefits? Well, that's right. In fact, a strong bond with friends can even lead to better blood pressure and a healthier weight. And just like us, animals tend to form friendly bonds too. Like a dog playing in a lake with an elephant, or a rhino gallivanting with a goat. And at some zoos, cheetahs are paired up with dog buddies. Those are some cool examples. However, they were all friendships introduced by people. But we do see animals forming friendships naturally in the wild. Kind of like us, many animals group up within their same species, like flocking ducks or schooling fish. Great point. But why do they do that? Why do animals like to stay in groups? What are the benefits? Well, the most common understanding about why animals group up is for safety. A predator can't eat the whole group, so most of them stay safe. Even predators can benefit from traveling in groups. Orca whales hunt and travel in pods, where they split up the amount of work necessary to catch their prey. This is so successful that they can hunt whales up to twice their size. Don't get us wrong. Animals like our clouded leopards that are typically considered solitary are still incredibly successful when it comes to survival. For example, hunting alone can make it easier to sneak up on prey. But there are lots of examples where animals that live in groups have advantages others don't. Even living things that are totally different from each other can sometimes benefit from working together. Yeah, we like to call that symbiosis. Big word, big concept. Let's look a little bit closer. Symbiosis includes mutualism and commensalism. Mutualism occurs when two or more organisms live together and both benefit from the relationship. On the other hand, commensalism is when one organism benefits from a relationship, while the other isn't really affected in any way. Here at the aquarium, we can actually see both of these types of symbiosis. Let's ask our animal care specialist, Adam, to point them out to us. Hey everyone, clownfish and sea anemones are a classic example of mutualism. Clownfish are protected from predators by living among the stinging tentacles, and in return, they feed the anemone and chase away its predators. The Japanese spider crab is a good example of commensalism. Barnacles hitch a ride on the crab, and since the crabs are messy eaters, they can pick up the extra scraps of food. Because the barnacle doesn't harm the crab in any way, the crab doesn't seem to care about the extra company. These are just two of many great examples of symbiosis that you can see here at the aquarium. Thanks, Adam. So as you can see, there are many good reasons for animals to have friends. Whether for comfort, gathering food, or even getting around. The main idea is that by relying on each other, life can be a lot better. <laughs> Just like how animals rely on each other for survival, it's always good to know that when I need a friend, I've got you two. Yeah, we're pretty great. Gosh, you are lucky. <laughs> Thanks everybody for joining us today to explore, discover, and learn more about relationships around our living planet. If you have any suggestions, questions, or new episode recommendations for the show, feel free to email us at expedition at thelivingplanet.com. Hey, we need to open our presents. Wait, I got you both presents too. You did? I did, two minutes ago, from the gift shop. I spent no time on this. <laughs> I'm touched. You should be. <laughs> All right, let's open them. Okay. Ready, set, go. Oh, gee, I always wanted a hot or cool compress. <laughs>